what we'll do is Michelle's working to come on and I really wanted to learn about a nonprofit of helping and I wanted to get together. I have a little cake, so we'll have an official light and blow out the candle. Uh, I think we have appropriate social distancing. <clears throat> <laughs> and then yeah. we just, you know, have people hang out a little bit. Some have, are coming in a short bit, dropping out quick. So I'm just so excited you could all join me. Uh, Barbara's in the other room and, and uh, she's, she sends her regards. She's pretty healthy. Hi, Michelle. Yay! Got a hat. So glad you <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday, Martin. Hey, we knew we could get people to wear hats. That's right. How do we get people to wear hats? That's it. So <clears throat> I thought we'd just start real quick and I'm going to call a name out, say where you're from, anything you want to say real quick. Like, let's get it to a sentence. If people are coming in. Then, Michelle, I'd love to just have a conversation about. My learning about the great Bob Moog Foundation, what they do, and to me, folks, the goal of this is to be a model of everyone here. If you aren't already, pick some nonprofit or local business and find some way to showcase them now because they're hurting the most. And I've done my best with my local business, and I know you all have, but this is, I couldn't think of a greater thing to do than. Uh, a nonprofit that I volunteer with. Hey, hello, Elise. So good to Hi, see you. Elise. Hey. You've got quite a few people from here. So let's just go ahead and Jim and Donna Flowers, would you just say where you're from and uh, just a sentence of, you know, what you guys do. Let's try to keep it to like one run on sentence or two. <laughs> hey, Martin, no we're pressure. We're, we're James and Donna Flowers, and James with Oh My Goodness Pimento Cheese in Stanfordburg, North Carolina. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. So they have their own business making the best pimento cheese on the planet. So you're going to say, advocate of it. Sanford, I've known, my gosh, back to what? Oh, my goodness. We were in prison together, wasn't it? Or yeah, pretty much. <laughs> early 90s or so, back in the days. Yeah, he came in as a co-op student, and I said, I'll, I'll take all the co-op students. And he goes, I was training myself to be a life coach then. And Sanford goes, do all the students have to have these big goals and life plans when they work at IBM? Right, Sanford? <laughs> Those were the days for sure. <laughs> and yeah, he has I'm a room full of synthesizers them. there. Go ahead, say oh, hello. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a big Moog fan myself. Um, but yeah, I'm here in uh, uh, Cary, North Carolina. I run Triangle Network Solutions, a cybersecurity consulting company. Ah. Spare time, I'm geeking out on synthesizers and pro audio. <laughs> Excellent. And Jane, Stanford, did I bump work? into you in a, in a uh, grocery store line several years ago? Anything you might have. <laughs> Gary. You might have. Uh, Jane, I'll let you go next. Where are you from? What you up to? What bring you here? I'm Jane Malucci. I'm in New Bern, North Carolina, and my company is The Reactive Voice. I deliver words that make sense. I write for people as a ghostwriter and also do website and content development. So that's the short version. Cool. Uh, all right, let's see. Chuck, uh, the Martells, the, they <laughs> let me stay in a barn. They'll tell you about that. <laughs> well, if he behaves, we give him a stall. <laughs> I run bed and barn bar Bed and Barn Farms, which is a horse hotel where people can stay with their horses when they're traveling. Cool. And um, Tam's cool. Tack and Antique Store. Interesting. In, oh, in Forest City. In Forest where City. The Facebook data center that looks like a maximum security prison is located. <laughs> Not their place, that Facebook. Uh, Chloe. Hey, Martin. I'm from Williamson, and I have a big meal bed and breakfast on my family farm. They moved here in 1922, and three of my rooms are in the pack house. And I have two Airstreams, and I want you to tell Barbara that the Airstream you stay in, I decided to name for Hank Cochran's boat. It's called The Legend. All right. I love that. Barbara knows who Hank Cochran is. I'm sure. Yes, yes. And Jim and Chris... <laughs> <laughs> hey, how you doing? Oh, Can you hear us? Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Happy birthday. That's Love cool that stuff. <laughs> We're coming to you from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and we 
Pat, our, uh, our business and our website is Geeks on Tour. We love technology and we love Martin Brosman. Happy oh, birthday, Thank you Martin. so much. Alisa. Oh, hi, Martin. Hi. I brought you flowers for your birthday. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Can you eat flowers? I from my garden. <laughs> yeah, because I can't get out right now. So I'm like, oh, I need my flowers in my house. But um, I'm Elisa Gabrielli. I own Design by Elisa. I work out of my home studio. And I design flowers for weddings and events. Oh. And I also have a company called Art Party Raleigh, where I teach, like, kind of like wine and art parties, you know, paint and sip parties. I come to your business or do corporate events or home birthday parties. And unfortunately, that's a, a business right now where you're supposed to be one-on-one -on -one or in groups. So it's kind of on hold for a while. So I'm enjoying being at home and doing some gardening right now. Hmm. Excellent. And she's an amazing artist of creating all types of things. Great. Let's, uh, Thank you. Uh, let's see. Sue. This is Sue Falcone from Greensboro, North Carolina. And I'm, oh, all right, what we got here. Okay, can you see me? Okay. I can oh, see you, we're good. Okay, uh, and I'm founder and CEO of Remarkable, a speakers bureau. And I represent professional speakers and now music artists all over the world. We're a global cool. company. And uh, we're just having fun. I mean, you know, we're learning new skills here. So we found out whether you're on stage or online, you're still in person. All right. So we're, we're learning how to do that. And we're fixing to have a new studio put here. So, you know, we're going to figure out how to make this work. Thanks for coming. Tom Golden. <laughs> yeah, I'm Tom Golden. I'm from Ireland. I'm a uh, therapist by trade. I've written a number of books on boys and men and how they heal differently from women and girls. And uh, that's enough for me. Yeah, the author is the best book on mothers raising sons. And what instrument did you play in music? So we got a musician here. <laughs> I'm a percussionist. Yeah, and 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 analog synthesizer too. Oh, that's true. I played keyboards back yeah. in the rock and roll days when I was in college. Came on and, uh, unfortunately, I didn't have enough money is. for a Moog. I had to buy yeah. an Arp Axe. <laughs> Great, Charles. Hey, Charles Register. I'm in Raleigh. I do photography and video for uh, marketing a variety of businesses, but travel and tourism is my favorite. And I also do the Google 360 virtual tours for Ooh. businesses. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we, we team up on, on all types of projects. So, Holly, you guys. Ah, I'm Dr. Holly Sullinger with Dr. Holly Speaks. I do corporate speaking, training, and consulting on uh, many different areas. Um, I'm Alan Christensen, and I also have a speaker agency called the Christensen Agency, but I don't re represent musicians, speakers, trainers, and edutainers. And I get to be one of those. So he's working. <laughs> we're working to retool right now, aren't we, Alan? We certainly are. Great. And Cheyenne. Howdy! My name is Cheyenne Kramer, and although my home base is in Raleigh, my husband and I have been traveling around Florida since December, uh, helping people healing in body, mind, and spirit. And uh, we are also working a project back in Raleigh that we hope to get back to soon that's called the Community Collaborative. We're working on building a residential entrepreneur incubator, uh, working in partnership with an East... Uh, East Raleigh Church. Excellent. And Cheyenne's done some amazing work in bring entrepreneurship to prisoners to have something to do other than relapsing and being stuck in our system. So hats off for that great work you did. Steve Hand, buddy. Good to see you. Hey, how you doing, Martin? Good to see you. I actually have some birthday cake. My wife put this together. So ah! uh, bananas wrapped up with the uh, pineapple, strawberries, and whipped cool cream on top. So yes, uh, and the geeks have some too. Ah. See that they're serving. There you go. It. I love Good. it. That's great. So uh, I help people grow by word of mouth, by referrals, and my goal is to help a thousand people make a hundred thousand dollars small business owners like, well. like ourselves. Um, you want to shout out for somebody? One of my friends, Sharif has a biomedical company and he pivoted in the past couple of weeks to start making ventilators 
and making a big difference in the market. So. Wow. Cool. Uh, and Steve, uh, it leads basically the B&I group in the area. And he, we're in a, a separate group called Beer Business and Boys. It meets oh, once a yeah, month. I'm right. proud of. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we get together and laugh a little bit. So Kevin. Alexander. So yeah, Martin, that's kind of cool celebrate your birthday. Was this going to be a week-long celebration for you? Yes, that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, everyone's introducing themselves. I actually teach scuba as my, uh, huh. my soon-to-be full-time profession. So that's, that's what I'm doing. Unfortunately, I'm on the sidelines right now. Yeah, yeah, they have not decided <laughs> scuba is essential, right? The pools are closed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. <laughs> Great, Kevin. Good to see you, man. He's in Raleigh. Colleen, go ahead. Hi, I'm Colleen uh, Bray in Raleigh, and I've been wearing social. I do pay-per-click and um, ads and advertising for small businesses and for the trades. And I assist Martin with his schedule and his scheduling. You have to go to the get to him. <laughs> I'm the gatekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> So, and I missed the beginning. So, if there was something else I was supposed to talk about, Martin, I missed it. No, we just gave away the million dollars. It's good. It's distributed. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and here yeah, we she, Martin. She manages my account. That's why it says Martin Brossman on her. So it's <laughs> good. Hey, Elise. Hey guys. Hi. Oh, so excited to be here. I'm Elise. I am from Raleigh originally and I've been living in Atlanta for close to three years now, which is so hard to believe. Um, I am a founding team member of a company called Brand Builders Group. We're a personal brand strategy firm. And then I also have a company that helps uh, salespeople and entrepreneurs with video confidence and lead generation. And Martin was kind enough back in the day to bring me on his podcast as a co-host. And so since then, I've just love podcasting and, and still host one to this day and just so grateful for for him and then for this community too and to see so many friends and familiar faces so super and we had a wonderful uh leading social selling podcast with the late greg hire so uh, i want to mention in honor he passed at 39 but uh he, he's uh i just want to kind of honor him on our birthday right elise Absolutely. Absolutely. Denise, where are you from? Hello, hello. I'm from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. I'm wearing my nanny hat and my cook and chief bottle washer. I'm visiting with the grandchildren right now at spring break, and I'm helping uh, their parents get things done here. But I own a roller skating rink in Rocky Mount, so um, I have a fun job. I really don't have to work. I met Martin about three years ago uh, through the community college system, and he has really um, grown my knowledge of digital marketing and social media. Happy birthday, Martin. Love you. Yeah. Roller skating rink, second generation in Rocky Mount. And, geez, and how many people did you have on your live stream you got going? Are you talking about the live? It, since it's been posted, it's been viewed over 2,000 times. Way to go. My latest one. That's my idea. Got to get your face out there. Good. Yes. Good. Uh, Sandra. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Welcome. So, Martin, happy birthday. Thank uh, you. I've never met you before, but I've gotten an invitation from you for yes. your party. How cool is that? And this is the time we're living in. I'm um, an associate of Michelle Mogusas, and I uh, do work with small nonprofits, not small, but uh, let's say small and um, very consequential nonprofits on strategic planning and communications. Um, right now, the clients that I'm working with are very busy trying to communicate what's happening with their service work during this crazy time we're in. So finding the language, finding the tone, finding the, you know, pulling out of them what they're doing instinctively. So it's just an interesting time for a writer and a communicator. Um, so I'm pleased to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks for coming. Dorothy. Hey, Martin. Happy birthday. Thank you. Martin, I live around the corner from each other. We've known each other for ages. I'm yeah. a chiropractor and um, help him out and barber out. And um, good to be here. I, you know, I, I, this morning I did the old text message of a happy birthday with a little singing things at the end of it. So wish you 
We have a great day. Thanks. Good to have you here. And then Randy, man. Hey. How are we Randy? doing? Go ahead. Happy birthday, first of all. Chocolate cupcakes. We just don't know how you're going to get to eat them right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I guess that's the, the thought that counts. Uh, we've been uh, working hard today on the, uh, the story down in Jacksonville, North Carolina there with Alan Covey. He's, uh, so far, it's, it's turning out to be a positive. Thank goodness for both ham radio and weather spotting. Uh, about all they have down there, from what I can see in here, is uh, just a big mess. They, you have to be careful. Watch out for falling trees and branches and whatnot. And but no casualties, no no bad stories like like in Mississippi, for example. So uh, it's turning out good and. Alan is building a big story. Each time you check out the uh, the page there on North Carolina ham radio operators, he includes more and more about what his spotters did and the the credit they're receiving from the storm response people in Norman, Oklahoma, as well. So it, it it's growing as we speak. <laughs> So Randy and I met on a group I set up called North Carolina Amateur Radio Operators to bridge the whole state, built it over Christmas as a break, and now it has almost 400 plus people. And he started jumping in and I said, what's your call sign? He said, I don't have one and I right now don't have a car. And we got to work together and got a veteran to help drive him to a test and, uh, and, and someone else had donated a radio. So he's on fire helping people connect. And also we have a mission to help veterans learn amateur radio that are often housebound. And uh, we've been making some headway, haven't we, Randy? Yes, we have. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, knocking on the door to the, the site, uh, posting their call signs, answering the questions, you know, wanting to join. And it, the interest is growing. Uh, some of it's natural from the emergency situations we're dealing with but some of it too is uh just to find out that it's another way to uh, connect with people without having to be uh, uh within range of uh this virus for example <laughs> yeah well good to have you i'm gonna get uh chris we have one more two more and i hopefully i got everyone oh no linda we'll get linda thank you linda for waving uh, Chris, go ahead and next. And uh... Uh, happy, happy birthday, Martin. What a great day. Thank you for inviting me to your party. Yeah, and he's out of the Washington, D.C. area. I'm a uh, Washington area D.C. real estate agent. And uh, tonight I have the uh, opportunity to uh, destage one of my properties. In, uh, <laughs> in two days. I'm uh, showing up at 7 o'clock because settlement's on Thursday. And, you know, I want to get ahead of the game. But we completely redid this property from top Martin. And uh, this is just an example of the kitchen. This was all uh, new Whoa. cabinets, new, new everything. I mean, just the, the whole, the whole roof to roof, to, to windows, to decks, to, to floors, to painting, to everything. So anyway, I'm just uh, so happy that you invited me and I just big hug to you, Martin. I hope yeah. you, uh, hope you have a great birthday. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay on this call the whole time. Cause uh, I got to get this, stuff out before uh sundown and anyway but anyway big hug to you buddy Sounds thanks for good, including buddy. me yeah appreciate it thank Take you care. so much okay linda thank you for waving i just saw the chocolate and thought oh go ahead and i'll unmute uh, you go ahead linda okay so happy birthday martin i actually just uh recently found a piece of paper while i'm trying to declutter that had your name on it and 2010 so it goes right with you being one of the first people that i met in the area from bill davis's um team nimbus and when i describe you to people i say martin is one of the best loved people in the triangle hmm. i'm not you know not to sell you short maybe elsewhere too but um, <laughs> I am a uh, failed comedian who's a superb resume writer. I do resume <laughs> link, LinkedIn. 
Um, I do still write jokes, um, most of them funny. I'm not particularly in a funny mood today because my uncle Ivan, who's better known as Gene Shea, mm -hmm. is a folk music icon who did have decided to go to a concert in early March. Oh. And at 85, just ended up getting the virus and um, infecting at least his daughter, who seems to be faring pretty well in Philadelphia. But um, he ha was on a ventilator, and when they took him off, they discovered he had a massive stroke. So hmm. he's not going to be alive for that much longer. They're doing, you know, I think it's pretty funny that he's going to end up going out high as a kite. <laughs> on morphine he smoked a little pot he's a music and, and but if you want to give to anything um he was a member he was one of the founders of the philly folk song society uh -huh. and the mc at the philadelphia folk festival it, if you've ever been to any kind of folk festival or maybe the bluegrass festival here i know pine cone is not far from here. They're all probably really suffering. I think a lot of them are nonprofit, or um, or they wish they could profit, but they <laughs> they don't. Um, anyway, if you want to hear some funny and interesting stories about Gene Shea, you can go to um, YouTube. There's all sorts of stuff. He likes to talk about the first time he brought um, Bob Dylan verse in the '60s to. Uh, a concert, his first real concert in Philadelphia, he got paid $150 oh. and tickets were $1.50. Wow. Um, but there was one last thing. Oh, I am actually, I, uh, a friend who's a nurse posted that she needed to get her resume in shape because she's got severe asthma and if they ask her to work with COVID patients, she's going to have to say no and possibly go elsewhere and she also feels she's being underpaid. So I decided I'm gonna create something. It's very hard for me to give away my magic, but for people who are unemployed, I'm not sure if it's gonna be a $1 price point or $10 if you can afford it. So, cause I'm giving it to so many people for $1. Cool. But I'm working on that this week. Well, so. well great. Well, we wanna get one more. We wanna get going with the event, but thanks Linda so much for sure. coming. And I've put in the chat, uh, the um, nonprofit uh, link so you can see it too that we're supporting this evening. And uh, let's, we got Sandra Jordan. Hi. Do you want to say hello quick? Where she you already from? did, Martin. Oh, I got I it. Did. Okay, thank you. I think Jean still needs to go though, right? Right. Uh, yeah, who's, oh, yeah, right. Jean, we had just the building there. So thank you for. Hello? Yeah, we got you. Uh -huh, good goodie. Okay, I know Martin from uh, Video Mojo Toastmasters group. And I am from Denver, Colorado. And if you look at my background here, this is not Denver, Colorado. <laughs> I wound up in Las Vegas for my granddaughter's wedding on March 14th and never left. <laughs> so instead of me taking care of their home and their dogs while they went on their honeymoon, they have me here with them while they're <laughs> what will be their honeymoon time. <laughs> So anyway, I just wanted to say happy birthday. I'm really glad you invited me and um, it's lovely to see all the lovely people here and uh, I appreciate being here. And I'm a nurse practitioner uh, in Denver hmm. and I uh, work in functional medicine. I don't do traditional medicine. I help women to age healthily, but also fulfilled. And that's my goal. So what I want to say is I put a link, which is the fundraiser. If you want to put your contact data for people to get to know you under it, do because okay. of course you'll help more people see it as well. So we've got that. Did I leave anyone out here? Let's see, waving hands. Okay, Michelle, I am so excited to have you here and I thought we'd just chat a little bit and if you'd be kind enough to tell about the organization, I'd share, we got to meet uh, together on an article I wrote on LinkedIn and, and you, you were kind enough to uh, help me learn, get some more accurate data on your father, Bob Moog. And after that, we, we met in person and it just, uh, it was several years ago, I believe. Yeah, it's been at least a few years, Martin. So yes, I'm Michelle Moog Kusa. I'm the executive director of the Bob Moog Foundation, as you all probably know. And I just want to say 
what an honor and privilege it is to be asked to be part of somebody's group birthday party like this. So <laughs> thank you to Martin for having me and for all you guys for helping uh, Martin celebrate his birthday and to be interested enough to hang around and um, hear about the cool work of the Bob Moog Foundation. For, for those of you who may not know, Bob Moog was a synthesizer pioneer who invented the Moog synthesizer in 1964. And his instruments sparked a revolution in the face of music, um, basically lending a brand new palette of sounds to music that were not, was never heard before and consequently changing um, the music that we all listen to. And he uh, had a very long career in synthesis where he considered himself, um, he's a very humble guy to be a tool maker making tools for musicians and he did that for 50 years and he passed away in 2005 and uh, he is never a guy who would have had envisioned a foundation in his name being, um, being very humble as he was but what happened near the end of his life is that uh, we he, he had a brain tumor and we were very feeling very protective of him, uh, and we didn't we didn't want the press to find out. Did the whole three month and three week journey with his brain tumor was hard enough, and um, uh, so in trying to keep the press away, but still trying to communicate to people what was going on with him, he asked my brother to set up. Uh, a page on the carryingbridge.com where um, we could communicate with 40 people. And if you don't know about the Caring Bridge, um, actually, I'm very happy for you if you don't know about the Caring Bridge because it's a site where you can communicate with people who are critically and terminally ill, and each person has their own web page. It's, it's an uh, extremely useful and valuable website. So we set up a page for him and my brother sent out a link uh, to 40 people that my dad really wanted to communicate with. And um, one of those people didn't realize that this was a discreet endeavor and posted the link on a synthesizer chat group. Well, we got a thousand hits in a day on that and um, my family got very upset because here we are trying to protect my dad's privacy. And um, so my brother put up a password and uh, he sent it out and said, don't share this with anybody. And um, my dad surprised us a couple of days later because I think he probably could sense where things were headed. And this was at the beginning of July, actually, and his illness started at the end of April, and then he passed away on August 21st, but he surprised us. He said, you know what, just take the password down. Just let him come. So we took the password down, and in seven weeks, 60,000 people logged on to that site, and the day he passed away, 20,000 people logged on. And to me, even more moving than the sheer numbers of people who were connected to this person was that over 4,000 people left testimonials to how Bob Moog had changed their life. And uh, they were incredibly moving. Uh, you know, people would say, because of Bob, I'm a musician. Bob Moog gave me my creative voice. Because of Bob, I'm an engineer. And what happened for us as a family is that my dad didn't really talk about his work that much. And we, of course, knew what he did because um, mostly because he was had some uh, fame and I would find out from other people that my dad was famous, but not from him. <laughs> like my friends would tell me ever since from the time I was little. Um, in any case, uh, we, we experienced kind of a real dawning to not just uh, that our, our, our father was accomplished, we knew he was accomplished, but what we, what we realized with this outpouring of, of inspiration really is how many, um, what, a, what a profound inspirational force he had been in people's lives for decades. And when he passed away, we thought, you know, that is a force that really deserves to be carried forward. 
And that's um, when and why we created the Bob Moog Foundation was to take that inspiration and carry it forward, particularly to younger generations who wouldn't have a chance to directly know Bob Moog um, or the, the instruments that he originally created. So we, we do that. We um, aim to inspire people through science, music, and technology, which is basically a mirror reflection of Bob's life itself. And we do that um, a few different ways. We have an educational program called Dr. Bob Sound School um, that we teach here in Asheville to over 3,000 kids a year. And it's, it's a comprehensive 10 week curriculum that we bring into the second grades. So we're teaching seven year olds about the science of sound. And we teach them how sound is made, how it travels and how it's heard. So it's, ba it's essentially the basic physics of sound. And, you know, of course we have our own interest in teaching kids about sound. Um, given the legacy, but, but it's bigger than that. Our, our goals are bigger. Our goals are to engage them in science, which is something this country really needs, to, um, but also to get them to think about the process of discovery, um, to ask questions and uh, test out their question and see, see what the test result is. We actually um, teach them a lot about the scientific method and use Bob's notebook uh, pages for them to see where he would write down an idea, he'd test an idea, and he would write down uh, the results. And sometimes he would have to scribble the middle part out and say it didn't work. And then he would try again. And we really try to impress upon the kids that you should write down your ideas and you should try them out. And if they don't work, you should try again. And we also just tried to get them to think outside of the box, to think creatively. And that's also something else that, you know, we feel could always be improved, especially among kids as they're kind of sucked into their screens where we're hoping to give them a more kind of tactile experience and to being more creative. And the 10 week curriculum delivers through very experiential activities. And what we like to say is that we, um, each, each activity is multi-sensory and the kids are touching, hearing and seeing sound in every activity. So that, that program has met with great success from the kids and the teachers, but also from the administrators and, and the parents. And so we've been very encouraged and we are currently trying to grow that program nationwide. And the other way, the other big way that we are carrying on our mission is that we just last May 23rd on what would have been um, my dad's 85th birthday, we uh, opened a Moogseum in downtown Asheville that had been a, um, a long time dream of ours. We, Part of our other work is um, archival preservation. We have the uh, Bob Moog Foundation Archives, which is a huge archive of uh, different kinds of prototypes and schematics and photos and on and on and on. We have about 10,000 different items. And we've always wanted to kind of combine our archival uh, endeavors along with education and bring Bob's legacy alive for people, and again, not for the sheer purpose of just telling them about Bob Moog's life, but to inspire them through this incredible medium of where science and art converge. So the Moogseum was opened on May 23rd. Sadly, it is closed right now and has been since uh, March 14th. So that was very exciting for us and Martin has been there and um, has been able to look around and absorb it. So anyhow, those, those are the kind of things that, that we are up to and that's what we're all about. Thanks, that's wonderful. When I heard about the program for children and the importance of bringing science distinctions to a young age and, and the influence it occurred because that happened for me. I, I tell people I, I learned about science from amazing teachers. In fact, I, I actually wanted to be a physicist until I took calculus the third time and decided to apply science and life itself. That was 
a big turning point for me and the importance also of learning to experiment, to fail, to succeed, and again, and that the process of mastery and real confidence is based on failure, really, and you showing it with experiments and your dad's life, because he was, he was very, uh, you know, I, I, a humble person that offered uh, a lot and, uh, and really, really wanted to be of service to the world. And I don't, just to let you guys know, uh, some of you might have heard of Emerson Lake and Palmer, Rick Wakeman, Diana Ross, I Feel Love, uh, all, and it goes on and on, uh, Funkadelia, uh, Flashlight. I mean, all these musicians were influenced by him beginning something. And then really, Michelle, a whole industry built off of it competitors and other things as well and the exciting thing is they're still going but you're the you're the seed for inspiring creativity and it's a wonderful museum of experience that you've put together so i i'd like to just open it up if people have questions or comments or something you might know or but i thought that was thank you so much for a great story of honoring your 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 dad's life by by doing something with it. And I, I think that's a wonderful piece. So we'll let you unmute yourself, ask a question, add a comment. Then of course I do have cake here, so I'm gonna light a candle. <laughs> it looks like hey, you're hey, hey, question. No. Yeah, go ahead. That's in Asheville. Is that where you're located? Yes, we're in Asheville, North Carolina. Okay, all right. It's a now it's a, a place on my bucket list. Okay. Oh, well, please do. And if you come up, I don't work in the Moogseum. I have an office behind the Moogseum. Okay. But if you come um, up to, and just okay. ask for me and I'll come up and give you a that little personal great. tour. That's great. When we, have, when we can do that. Right. I know. <laughs> I have to say, I, I go to the Moogseum about once a week because we have an online store where we sell all kinds of t-shirts and hats and, you know, kinds of same things that a lot of museums sell. And I've been, um, I unfortunately had to lay off my entire staff uh -huh. uh, a few weeks ago. So I, I'm going in and packing those orders. And I, it, it does really pull at my heartstrings to see the Moogseum so empty. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just because there are so many people who have been through, we've had about 6,000 people through and they've gotten so much out of it. And I know it's not just me, you know, just uh, one, one, one business or endeavor of so many. It's um, really, uh, you know, just a reflection of where we are to see all these um, facilities that are so meaningful to people just sitting, sitting empty. It's very sobering. Yeah. So we will, we will be so excited whenever we can actually open a backup again. Oh, Michelle, wow. My nephew was in music in Atlanta in the 60s and the 70s, and I got all this information wrong, but he was an early adapter of the Moog synthesizer, and he said he played a session, and he did about 10 seconds, and they paid him all kinds of money because he was the only one who knew how to add it to that particular song, but it was certainly worth it. And my oh, nephew, that, of course, is 70, 75 years old now, but he still, when I told him I was coming and I would meet you, he was excited. Yeah, you know, I bet you the he, if I got the timing right, he probably understood how to use the old modular synthesizers, which are the ones that look like airplane cockpits, some people, or a telephone operator. He might uh, have, but he, he knew when the Elton John movie, he knew all that equipment that was in those things from the 70s. When he said, oh, I worked on that one, I worked on that one. Yes, he's been an early adapter. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Good for him. He got paid great for just a few seconds of putting Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so those early synthesizers were, were pretty um, complex to use and he's an uh, engineer, so yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people didn't didn't understand them. It took it took a while to master them. So there were people who were specialists who would come in and do that and their skills were really valued. That was him. Yep. <laughs> Hey, Michelle, like this is Alan. I got a story for you. Uh, back in high school, which was, a, well, 76, it was a long time ago, uh, my buddy bought a mini Moog synthesizer, and he was in a, we were, it was two days before the talent show, and we stayed up all night long. There were six of us that stayed up all night long to try to fashion some kind of uh, strap that he could carry it around on stage with him. And we pulled it off, and he won the talent contest that year. 
But um, we were literally up all night long trying to figure out how he could pick that keyboard up and carry it around <laughs> the stage. So he started out sitting down, he picked it up, he ran over the, all over the stage. He's a great pianist. Um, but uh, every time I hear your, your name, I, 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 I go back to that story. Well, you know, that's really remarkable because they eventually wound up making what they called keytars, which, yeah. But that wasn't until the late 70s or, or, yeah, the late 70s. So that's pretty early. And if he has, did anyone take a picture of him with that? I would love to see that. Oh, no, no, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't. But it was 50, well, is it 40 years ago? Whatever, however old I am. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, excellent. Great. I want to take one second in. We have two new guests here, and one is a former neighbor I grew up with in Washington, D.C. Mara, just say hi. Say hello. Oh, we were. I don't know if I'm unmuted. <laughs> we got you. Hi, Martin. Happy birthday. Yeah. Thank you. I remember when he was a kid, he was, a really, he was a really nice kid and a really nice grown-up. So. Yeah. Well, I feel, I I'll keep very, paying very, you because not everyone might have that same story. My well, I think, uncle I think told my wife he was a real hellion sometimes when in the retirement house. <laughs> but you are a great friend, and I always loved your family. So good. And Deborah, would you be kind enough to unmute and just say hi? Hi. Um, so I'm Deborah, and I had the delightful opportunity to meet Martin about 13 years ago which is absolutely amazing. And he was just getting into his men's work, which was um, just really refreshing to me. And so we did some work together for a little while. And uh, I moved back over to the West Coast and I've stayed in touch with him through social media. And uh, here I am, happy birthday. Thank you, it's great to have you. Well, we wanted to open up a few more questions, comments, I've just been so excited to have the honor to get to volunteer with the Bob Moog and work with Michelle over the, the years with this. And I'm determined, Michelle, we got to get scheduled soon. Colleen's right there. So Colleen waves so she gets to see you. There we go. <laughs> and uh, get scheduled soon to, to keep it growing. And maybe I can interview you when you're in the shop. You know, get a little Zoom right. thing going there as well. Sanford, you've got to have something. You're sitting in a room full of stuff inspired by your dad. I, yeah. I just have to say, Sanford, I noticed as soon as everyone got on that you have on one of our T-shirts. So extra brownie too. points to you. <laughs> oh, can, right. can, actually, can, you show every, can you show everybody what it is? Can you show yes, the shirt? it is. Mr. Robot. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Is, it's a little hard to tell, but it looks like a modular synthesizer in the yeah. form of a robot. Yeah, that's right. one of the things. I've always liked buttons and dials and switches and knobs. So when I saw my first Voyager, I was like, oh, yeah, I got to have one of those. <laughs> yeah, excellent. And I guess my other question is, is where did you get, I'm sure it was custom made, that wonderful Moog couch that you have in the, the museum? I, I love that. I think uh, Gary Newman sat on it. We, we, uh, we get that question a lot. There were, was a company called Woof out of Barcelona, Spain, who was making them. And um, we contacted them like 10 years ago and asked if they would donate one because it, they, they were $2,000. And they said, yeah, we'll donate one if, um, if you'll pay the shipping. And the shipping alone was $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we did, and I'm glad we did because initially it was just in my office, but we've brought it to big trade shows with us, and now it is like the centerpiece of our Moxium store. It's our selfie station where people can take selfies. So just for the rest of you, this is a couch that actually looks like a mini Moog, which is the most iconic Moog synthesizer. And so anyone kind of in the know about Moog synthesizers, when they walk in and see it, they just kind of freak out um like sanford uh, so yeah. yeah that's that's where we got it. unfortunately that company is no longer in business and i am going to share a picture of that real quick so you can see it there thanks this is a picture you took of me i'm real pleased with with her dad in the background at the Mozam. that's it sanford excellent well let's Good get stuff. let's get a few other uh let's just questions comments anything you you know, I think this is such an example of taking on a legacy off of a legacy and, and building it up and moving forward. And I just want to say, uh, 
Uh, there's also a movie in the works too on this, right, Michelle? They're still getting all the rights and permissions yes. juggled. But what is it? What is the name of that one? Electronic Voyager. And actually, it's interesting. This is um, a documentary that we've been making for four years, actually. Um, there's a small Canadian production company, Wave Shaper Media, that it was their idea. And they approached me and asked me if I would help tell my dad's story, uh, kind of through my eyes, rediscovering him. And that's what we've done. And we've been all up and down the East Coast and um, over to Europe as well interviewing people, which has been absolutely fascinating. And this, what's happened is that initially they, uh, they did a couple like Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaigns, of course, tapping into the synthesizer community for support. And that's where a big part of the promotion has happened. And the, those people who supported the documentary at that time were promised the two hour ver version of Electronic Voyager but they have so much footage that they've turned it into a four-hour hardcore, what they're calling a hardcore version. So Electronic Voyager will be the hardcore version, but there'll be a two-hour version, which will probably be something different. And then they're currently um, looking for distribution. And, and they're also hoping to do a, a bit of shorter version as well and, and get it onto PBS. So, um, and, and just so you understand, the documentary... Um, echoes something that I feel is very important and we try to convey in the Moxium and I convey when I do um, any public speaking and that is to uh, to represent my father as a complex nuanced human being because uh, a lot of people just kind of know him as the icon up on the pedestal that he invented the synthesizer and it's kind of like you know they envision him in his white lab coat and the synthesizer descended down from synthesizer heaven and he was rich and famous from then on and everything was perfect <laughs> but of course that's not how life is right for any of us and uh it was much much different than that and his um his life was full of ups and downs and some um, a lot of them were financial uh, and business oriented because he was not, he was in business, but he wasn't really a business man, um, so to speak. So the, the, the documentary also really strives to portray him as this, you know, very complex um, human being with a lot of varied experiences and, you know, being an icon, which is something he was really uh, uncomfortable with. Um, is only a, a part of who he was. So if you, I hope that you all get to see it because it is, we, we put a years of work into it and there are lots of different people involved and they're fascinating, uh, the stories that they have to tell about um, their own perspectives and experiences, but their time with, with my dad as well. Wonderful. And I'm going to get one more person to be uh, to say hello. Emery, do you mind unmuting there and saying hi? Uh, that my stepson Emery is here. I'm real excited. He's off the charts brilliant. And I love to make him feel uncomfortable by saying things like this. Emery, <laughs> you, you there? He may not have his mic plugged in. Unmute. Oh, Go he's ahead. Say, he's right. saying you can hear us, but you can't hear me is what he's saying. Okay, good. Yeah, okay, he's... great. Well, thanks for coming. He's working on some cool projects. He's a senior data scientist. So we have great, and he's met Sanford. We all hung out together. Well, I'm, I'm going to move to a very important thing of lighting a birthday uh, candle cake, if you don't mind. And I will let you sing happy birthday to me, and then I'll blow it out. And so we're going to, can you see it here? Yes. Oh, there we go. go. There it is. Nice. And it is carrot cake. So go Ooh. ahead. Oh, my favorite. Da, 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 da. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. This is horrible. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> That's hilarious. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> that was excellent. So I will, uh, you know, uh, Martin, I, I just really harmonizing for a moment. What's that? 
I think we were all harmonizing for a moment. It's that forgot. little moment. It kind of uh, like is a that what that was? Where we was. It was like musical <laughs> promise. So a tribute to the synthesizer. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> or something. Right. Don't quit your day job, okay? Exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I am well, going to ask you to at least check out. Uh, I put uh, the the link in there about the Bob Moog Foundation, check it out. And this is one of many small businesses that are working to survive and hang in there. And I, you know, my view is if we all pick one we're passionate about and share what's great about them and support them, that we will all get through this. So, so this is one I wanted to do for my birthday. And Michelle, I'm so touched that you you took the time to come and join us and uh, and let me contribute to you. I think one of the gifts is the ability to be able to contribute to someone. And thank you for letting me do that uh, to your life that helps so many people. And someone who had my own learning challenges going up, those little sparks of science and curiosity were so critical to me keeping going when Lots of evidence might have said sometimes for me to not. So, you know, I know you're doing that with young people. Absolutely. And I also want to say that Martin started a fundraiser for us on Facebook and he has, he has exceeded his goal. Um, and I just want to, hey. for any of you who have participated, thank you. Thank you for supporting the Bob Moog Foundation. We do really need it. We're in the same position as everybody else, especially with the Moogseum closed. It could, you know, completely cut off a, a, one of our streams of income. So we're, we're doing fast, a lot of fancy footwork right now to try and make things work just like everybody. So, you know, every donation is deeply appreciated by all of us. So thank you so much. Well, and I, yes. think, I think Martin touched all of our lives in one way or another and helped all of us out. Yeah. So I know I do, and I know most of you guys all do too. Really appreciate all of his assistance with us. Uh, Martin Mar is one of the biggest hearts ever. Definitely. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Michelle, yes. I'm, I'm wondering, is there a connection that could be really valuable for you? just thinking of all the incredible people on this Zoom mm -hmm. call, and if there's a specific industry or a person or something that would really support and boost your work, uh, what might that be? Uh, well, this may be a predictable answer, but uh, you know, the thing that we need the most is funding. Uh, we, we have a huge amount of potential, um, and we just don't have the resources to reach that potential. So being connected to people who have, uh, deep resources and are interested in inspiring generations of people through science and music and getting them engaged, um, would be really, really valuable to us. Excellent. Excellent. So what, uh, we'll just okay. take a moment. If you're okay, we'll go around and let people have a final say. And, and, and I put the link in there so you can add your name. And people have also added emails in there, you can see. But it's, uh, I think we're all at least on Facebook in some way connected. And uh, Sandra, if we're not connected, just remind me and we'll get you in the Facebook and include you as well. <clears throat> so who would, uh, James, I'll let you, I'm just going to go square by square. Just you get a final sentence and we'll bring it to a close. And this couldn't be a better birthday. James, go ahead. Hey guys, we, we appreciate this tonight. This has been a great birthday party being a virtual one, but this is really cool. And the topic is really awesome also. Um, just happy birthday. And on the Moog, on the Moog side, is there a particular product that your father has made that you do not have in your hands? Oh, uh, yeah, there, there are many of them um, because they're super expensive right now. So it's easier to list what we do have. We have a small Moog modular. We have uh, two mini Moogs, a multi Moog and a micro Moog. Um, but of the vintage instruments, that's all we have. Um, uh, and also, I just want to say that I wanted to thank everyone here who has 
who has said Moog, I know um, this gentleman, whoever it was, James, I guess, uh, wavered because sometimes people pronounce it Moog. Um, and actually there's part of, an, you know, the other part of the families, wherever they lived, some people do pronounce it that way, but my father has always pronounced it Moog. And people in England in particular refuse to pronounce it Moog. But everyone here has said Moog, and I just want to say thank you, because I, I've had to correct people since I was like three years old. So um, we actually, the Micro Moog um, was a recent donation. So there are people who have been donating um, uh, hardware to our archive, which is absolutely wonderful. They out often give it to us when it's not working particularly well, which is fine with us because we have collaborate with a lot of very experienced uh, synthesizer technicians. So we can always get instruments restored, but we love getting donations of um, any kind of Mo gear. Excellent, thanks. Uh, Jane, closing comment? Oh, first of all, of course, happy birthday, Martin, once again. And this has been a great party. Wonderful to meet people that I haven't met yet. And Michelle, this is just outstanding what you're doing. And I'm wondering if, um, you know how they have space camp for adults, if you might do an adult camp for um, music. Yes, we, yes, we're working on that. Uh, you know, whenever we can provide camps again, we, were, we are going to be doing that because we, Every time we have a kids camp, the parents ask us when we're going to have an adult camp. So, and, and I really appreciate the spirit behind that too, right? It's not only kids who want to get dive in there and discover something new. I mean, I'm 52 years old and I'm always uh, kind of thirsting to, to, to do new things and uh, push my own boundaries. So um, thanks for asking. I think in the next probably year, we'll be offering that. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and, and uh, Michelle, I'm open to help with that one. <laughs> All right. And I would say if you guys are interested, just you can follow us on Facebook. There's a Bob Moog Foundation page and there's a Moogsium page. We're, of course, on Twitter and Instagram as well. Um, and the, the Bob Moog Foundation has a website, which is actually going to be upgraded in a matter of days, something we've been working on for over a year. And now that things have slowed down where you can finally finish it off and um, the Moogseum has its own website as well so um, but I think you can keep in touch with what we're doing through our two Facebook pages if you want to. Great Chuck Martell and Tammy. Martin we just want to wish you a very happy birthday Michelle thank you for sharing all of the Moog information it brought back a lot of history for me because I remember a lot of the Junior Jocko bands in my day back in the 60s and the early early 70s that had those kinds of synthesizers. And we want to remember that they, they were the spinoffs for the voice identification procedures that we have today, I believe. And Debbie, is that, are you sitting with Mount Rainier and, and Friday Harbor in your backdrop? I, I'm, I'm a Washingtonian and that kind of looks very familiar to me for some reason. You are really close. So that's Mount Rainier and Gig Harbor. Gig Harbor. Ah, oh, man, I missed it by 50 miles. Sorry. <laughs> Pretty close. Pretty close. Excellent. Thanks so much. Sanford, uh, closing comment. I just want to say uh, thank you, Michelle, and happy birthday, Martin. Thanks, man. Look forward to getting back and playing with your gear over there. Yeah, anytime. Chloe. Come on down. We'll fire it up. I got the fog machine going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, I'll let you uh, go ahead. Closing Happy comment. birthday, Martin. You're an inspiration. And Michelle, I did call my nephew who knows about your dad. And I said the Moog Foundation. I have English ancestry. And he quickly corrected me. So, yes. <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know Bob Moog. And I said, really? He said, oh, spell it. And then he just, you know, I think he was putting me on. But he, didn't, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't let me say that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Jim and Chris of the Geeks on Tour. Oh, there we hey, go. Hey, Martin. Happy birthday. And thank you so much, Michelle. That was just really, a, really a treat. And, uh, you know, she made me go over there and donate. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. Hey, happy birthday. See you later. Thanks. Sue? This has been great. I, I've enjoyed meeting all of you. I've known Martin for a long time, you know, and happy birthday, Martin. This was Thank exciting. You. This was exciting. Uh, now a new place to go in Asheville. And I bet my music artist, 
I can't wait to tell them. Okay, I bet they know this because I represent some vintage groups. So I bet they know all about that. So it's going to be fun. I'm excited about that. Well, Sue, I want to tell you there's a, a parking lot, uh, a nice paid parking lot. I call it across from the Mellow Mushroom off of Main Street. Michelle, is that in one of the okay places to park? To come yeah. to yours, it's less than yeah. a block away. Okay. Well, okay. Don't get towed. It's just a few okay. dollars. Yeah. Don't worry about right. it. We'll walk yeah. out and get yeah. to them. Okay, that's great. All right, thanks. Excellent. Good. Charles, closing comment. And you can always say pass. I don't. No, thank you, Martin and Michelle, for the best birthday party I've been to in a long time. And looking forward to going to Asheville and to the museum. Excellent. Holly, you guys. Uh, from me and Holly, happy birthday again, Martin. Thanks for putting this together. And Michelle, thanks for letting me tell this story about my buddy and uh, all of us putting that strap on. Um, that didn't sound right, did it? Uh, <laughs> anyway, happy birthday. <laughs> and Alyssa says happy birthday, Martin, too. Thanks, thanks. Jean, would you mind uh, unmuting? Unmute. We'll get you next. Am I unmuted now? You are. Oh, goody. Um, um, just wanted to say thank you very much. I'm happy to be in on your birthday party. And I think it's wonderful for you to have something like this that enhances our sex sense of connectedness, which we know is real in this world today. So uh, I love it. I love seeing more people from all over the country or, or maybe maybe most of you are from North Carolina. I don't know. No, we got a pretty it's good spread here. <laughs> and I really love it. Thanks so much. I had uh, someone from Singapore and uh, Europe and Japan and they they said, I love you, but I'm not getting up at like one in the morning or three to come to your birthday party. So they sent their regards as well. So Dorothy, you're next. Well, happy birthday, Rod. This was a great idea. I'm so glad you're technically savvy. You know? And then Michelle, it was, in, it was really good to hear about all about your dad. I mean, you sound like an amazing man and he, he's got to be proud of you. So, you know. and happy again, birthday again, Martin. Thanks we'll so much. We'll celebrate in person. That's right. But we can get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get you to work on me. Correct me a yes. little bit. I think Friday. So, well, wait. great. Uh, Kevin. Yes, sir, man. Happy birthday to you. I look forward to, uh, of course, many more years. We've been friends for a huge amount of years now. And uh, it was neat meeting everybody here. Uh, it'd be cool. Once I moved to, Cozumel, Mexico, I'll, I'll have one of these and I'll be the farthest away guy. That sounds great. Uh, Colleen. Hold it. Well, happy birthday, Martin. Um, like I said, you know, I think you've helped every one of us on this call, at least most of us. And Michelle, thanks for m so much for the um, information about your dad and all. Um, I am one of those people that always called them a Moog synthesizer. <laughs> I'm from Pennsylvania, and that's what they used to say up there. <laughs> All right, good. In fact, Martin, I had to hear Martin several times before I started flipping, flipping it over to Moog. <laughs> so, uh, but it was very interesting, and thank you, and best of luck with, with your organization. If Martin keeps helping you out, I'm sure you'll be good to go. Yeah, thank you, Colleen. Thank you, thank you. Happy Randy, uh, final word here. Well, first of all, happy birthday, and I don't know if you can, there it is. There's the chocolate cupcake. All right, <laughs> looks good. Michelle was the pastry chef. I was just the oven engineer. Happy birthday, Martin. Yeah, hi, Michelle. Good to, good to see you back there. And good. I, I just wanted to say I'm really, I hope that Michelle will be able to uh, put that music uh, thing for adults together, because I am one that would be very I'm, you know, 60 years old, but I still love that old 80s music and the late 70s. Emerson, Emerson Lake, and Palmer was one of my favorite groups because of the, all the synthesizer, you know, music that they had. I, I really grew me to them. So I, I would look really, oh, really. Hold on a second. Stuff. Hold on. Hold on. She's going to get uh -oh. something. You said the magic word. They said that, yeah. And then, of course, that was, uh, you know, Lucky Man was the first analog synthesizer yeah. solo at the end. Right. That right. was uh, a big thing as well. So I'm, while we're getting in, I'm going to get Al. Al jumped in. I want you to, Al, if you want to unmute. Um, he's also from Video Bojo Toastmasters and 
if you want to uh, unmute you out, say, say some closing comment here. Oh, okay. you unmuted yourself. Go ahead, unmute yourself. So since, oh, go ahead. Um, since someone just mentioned Emerson Lincoln Palmer, I just, <clears throat> I, I also have personally inherited our, our family archives, which I am busy in my spare time, <laughs> such as it is, um, organizing. And I just thought you'd like to see this. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> That's great. Has Michelle seen that? Seen. Yeah. Do you see that? You, you, you're on screen. That's it. That's Keith yeah. and your dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that is <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. And here's, uh, you'll, you guys will love this too. Here's the story really quickly because I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, so, you know, Keith Emerson was like the ultimate rock star with his long hair and his, he would wear the black leather. And of course, he was an incredibly talented musician and very, um, quite the showman. And uh, there, my dad, on the other hand, was the, you know, the geeky scientist engineer, but they had this great friendship. And at, at the NAMM show, which is a big music convention out in Anaheim, um, uh, Keith was doing a, a sh kind of showcase of his music and playing different synthesizers. And he, he invited my dad to join him on stage to play the theremin, which is a, one of the oldest electronic musical instruments that you play without touching it. So it's something that we actually use in Dr. Bob's Sound School. And there was this moment, apparently, Keith was wailing away on the synthesizer, and my dad was waiting and waiting and waiting to kind of be cued in. And he and it took a while, and then when then he did, my my dad just kind of went crazy and unleashed his inner rock star. So this is uh, the picture of them <laughs> Look from at that, that night, <laughs> where my father's like going crazy playing the theremin, which you play by just uh, in, in simple terms, just uh, waving your hands around two antenna, and Keith is there playing a, a ribbon controller. That was great. Anyhow, I just thought they were right there on my pool table. I thought yeah. you were seeing them. Thank you. Wonderful. That's awesome. That is great. That was really great. Let's Happy go birthday, to... Martin. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Al, you got it. Hey, man, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, uh, it's just audio go... on. Go ahead. You got just it. I got you a got little it. band here, but uh, just uh, glad to see your friends. Good. Excellent. Emery, I don't know if you have audio. Uh, if not, that's cool. Not yet. We're okay, man. We'll keep going. And I think Chris is over showing Al, so we'll get to uh, Maura. We'll let you uh, close in comments, unmute, and say something. Um, I just am grateful for you as a friend. You've always been passionate about helping people your whole life, and your birthday would be no different. Uh, you're probably one of the most genuine, good, decent human beings I know, and I'm I'm just so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I also I also love that presentation. I, I'm not at all educated in music or synthesizers or anything like that. But when Martin shared about it with me, I knew it set his passion on fire. And when I see that in anyone, it makes me happy because I know that they're operating like in their gift or in their in their giftedness. And um, so you, you are doing something that's really important for, for children now, but also for the future. You're preserving a certain kind of giftedness that people are going to need to operate in. And that's something very important for the humanity. Of, uh, it's just really important. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Well said. Sandra, I know I don't think I got you yet. Uh, it's been great listening to everybody uh, comment on the wonderful work that Michelle is doing on behalf of her father and on behalf of the legacy that and the sort of spark of innovation that uh, she mentioned, which resides between art and science somewhere, and in this case, music and science. Um, I've known Michelle for probably 15 years. Um, well, as the foundation began and then as the program began, and I've just been cheerleading her and hoping for all of the big ideas everybody has to come together because it really is a big idea. It's still difficult for people to understand what that means to talk about art and science in the same 
uh, conversation. And she's really a leader in that. And um, she's being recognized by educators and musicians and uh, the sciences. So Martin, you're going to be my, my next favorite host of any kind of event like this. You're so engaging and lovely. And um, I'm really grateful for this wonderful Monday night showcasing Michelle and her work and celebrating your birthday. So thanks again, everybody. It was great meeting all of you. Excellent. Uh, Whitney, you want to unmute? You kind of, you had, Whitney had something else going on and he said he came in anyway. So I'll let you have a, a sentence, a closing comment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, happy birthday, Martin. Uh, our relationship's been challenged since uh, first watch, uh, Sola and, uh, and the, uh, uh, sawmill tap room been shut down. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not the same anymore. <laughs> right. uh, but, uh, you know, uh, sort of my reminisce on the uh, Moog synthesizer. Uh, my first date in the family car was to see Emerson, Lake, and Palmer at uh, the Charlotte Col Coliseum. That was probably like 1972, somewhere in there. Um, and uh, that was a real big deal back when I was in high school growing up and Rick Whiteman later on and all those other artists that used it. Uh, but that was a real big deal when Emerson, Lake and Palmer came out and everything. It's sort of memory from the past there. But uh, happy birthday again, Martin, and uh, best wishes. Thank you. And Steve, are you, you still there? I know you're there in picture. Are you in? I, yeah, uh, man. Yeah, uh, kill that screen there. You, you had to hear me singing, but that was not terrible, I guess. But <laughs> enjoyed it. So uh, thank you for having me for your birthday. It was great to see a lot of people I know and, and meet some new ones. Michelle, I loved your story. And I have a an aunt who lives in Arden, which is not too far from you. Ah. Uh, she's got an art gallery out there. So I don't know if it's possible to make a connection that'll make sense. But if we can, we certainly will we'll work on that. So thank you, Martin. Happy of birthday. And come visit the Moxeum. Yes, when once come, this when you come visit, I'll be out there. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. And Chris, I'll let you uh, have a closing comment there in your showing. Oh, uh, Martin, I just think you have some of the most amazing friends. And it was so nice that you included me tonight um, for your party. Uh, I really appreciate it. I think that uh, legacy is such a wonderful uh, thing to talk about because uh, we just kind of rush through life and we often don't, you know, spend enough time and and give enough tribute to those that have touched our lives and have really you know brought true meaning to why we do what we do so i, I just uh, congratulate you on a on a wonderful uh, gathering and uh, i really appreciate your friendship and and uh, it was very nice to be to listen to uh so many wonderful comments tonight about just moog and and uh and life you know so anyway i hope everyone stays safe by the grace of god and and, uh, you know, these are challenging times, but we will, we will, we will get through them. And uh, on the other side, everything will be fine. Happy birthday, Martin. Thank you for Thank including you. me. Thanks. Does it, did I get everybody? Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Michelle. Do check it out and, and also invite us. Let's keep working together to create the next version of all of us in this new future and just keep asking the question how do we help each other and how do we succeed and and i guarantee it will uh, work out so anyway thanks everyone for a wonderful birthday thanks so much happy birthday martin thank you thank you take thank care you, happy birthday martin thank you see you buddy see ya thank you happy birthday thank you happy birthday it's nice to see all of you yeah oh. Lovely crowd. Very cool. Yes. Happy birthday, Martin. You ready for some fog? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. All right, let's do it. And, and Michelle, thanks so much, too. This was great. I, um, so I thought it was a wonderful story you got there. So I thought you did a great job, and I'm excited to help out. So we'll get Colleen to get something going soon, okay? That would be great. And uh, Sandra, are we getting smoke in the background, or is that? Uh, the fog machine isn't warmed up. I thought I plugged it in, but it's not putting out any That's fog. That's okay. Now, so. We can all wait. So <laughs> it was anyway. worth a shot. <laughs> Great. All right, I'm gonna sign off. Oh, absolutely. Night, Take care, folks. Take care. Thank you. It was lovely to be here. Yep.
We, I appreciate it greatly. And uh, Chuck, so good to see you too. Glad you all had it. So, yeah, uh, I we're Mar, we're pretty much being very careful here because it would not be good to uh, for either of us to get it. And so we're all being careful. Take care and safe of yourself, buddy. Yeah. Thanks, man. Take care, Martin. Take care, guys. There we go. We got, we got oh, there we on. go. We got smoke there, Dan. Woo! Drives so <laughs> my wife crazy. Yeah, you need to know that's not a st that's upstairs in their house. So the smoke drops down over the living room. It's oh yeah. <laughs> you see, see it when I fire up the lasers. Yeah. Are you playing some music or just the fog machine? Uh, yeah, play, make some noise, Sanford. Yeah, let's see what we got here. He's got all these cool instruments. And, and Emery is working on, my stepson is working on some cool musical projects. He's on um, Instagram under Emery Carr. So you can see some of his art and uh, creative aspects. So oh. I, I tried to make a, a, a donation, Martin, and, and uh, it didn't seem to go through, but I'm going to try again. Okay. If it goes through twice, is, is there any way it can be reversed? I just don't know what's happening. So. Well, uh, don't do not do any more. If you, got, if you overdid it, let me know and I'll send you it. Because I don't know how to reverse it. I just don't want you to spend more money than you planned well, on it. So. If, it, if it doesn't show up in an let hour. Let me know. So I'll, I'll if you went twice, again. let me know and I'll send the money difference. Okay? Because I'm a regular donator of it. Okay? Just let me know. Okay. Okay? Okay. I, I'm glad to take care of that. So... And uh, Sanford, uh, having fun, look at that, with all his lights and stuff there. Oh, yeah. You got to have a little fun. So, yeah, out. we've got it. Well, guys, I'm going to sign and, and take care of my bride over here and check in with her. But thanks so much. Thanks, Emery, for coming. It was great. We'll see you guys later. Take, take care. care. Happy birthday. We'll see Happy, you soon. Thanks. It was great. Take care. Bye.